Okay, this is for the morning of Tuesday, March the 9th, and we're looking at the last part of hydrocarbons, and we're going to be going over isomers. Um, wanted to show you something quickly first. Uh, if you have a carbon chain C5H12, um, this means that it's all single bonds. And how do I know it's single bonds? Any time that the, the hydrogen number is twice the carbon number plus two. So five times two is 10, plus two is 12. So just showing all the hydrogens there. If you ever have a situation where the hydrogen is twice the carbon number, that means you have one double bond in there. So if you add up all the hydrogens here, what you're going to see is that um, when you have an alkene or you have a double bond in a carbon chain, you're going to have twice the number of hydrogens as carbon. And if you have um, twice the number of hydrogens minus two, that means you've got a triple bond in your structure. Just something that you sometimes see as you're going through this journey with uh, organic chemistry. Um, so a quick way to see if you've got any single, double, or triple bonds is to use this formula or this set of formulas right here. So let's talk a little bit about isomers. The term iso means different and mer means molecule. So it's different forms of the same molecule. So the first type of isomer that we're going to talk about is a structural isomer. And this is the uh, most prevalent type of isomer. So let's go with C5H12. And so I'm just going to draw carbons here. If we were to draw carbon chains with C5H12, it could look like this. But what about this? If we move the one carbon and put it up here, it's still C5H12 if you count all your hydrogens. This is an isomer, different form of the same molecule. Now, you might think to yourself, what does it matter which one that we have here? Well, when you make small changes to the structure of the chemicals in organic chemistry, you're going to make um, major differences in what the chemicals do. Okay, so a structural isomer means you've got the same formula and you just rearrange to make different things. So you could probably make a couple of different isomers off here. You could probably do a 2,2-dimethyl uh, propane in here. Let's take a look at another style of isomer, and this one's a round double bond. So this one's going to be very important for page two of your naming. So these are called cis and trans isomers. When you have double bond, it locks a molecule in place. So if we took this molecule right here, there's our chain. Because both branches are going up, cis means same. So these guys are going in the same direction. They're both heading up. So if the carbon chains were both heading down or both heading up, we've got cis. So just name it the way you would normally name it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got a heptene. The ene is on the third carbon. And once you're done naming it, cis. So how would that look if it was trans? Trans will tell you that it's going in the other direction. Okay, where cis is same direction, trans is different direction. So the carbon chains could be going like this or like this. One is up, one is down. We're here, both are up. So this would be, once again, 3-heptene. And this would be a trans structure that we're talking about. Make sure that you've got a dash anytime you've got a name to a number here. These are more important in your life than you might understand. Um, in nature, all fats are cis, but sometimes when we're producing food, and you don't understand this, but a lot of your food is made in labs, they use things called trans fats. Now the problem is everything's very specific in chemical and biological systems. So where we have enzymes that could break these down for energy, we can't break these trans fats down, which leads to obesity, 
and can also lead to autoimmune diseases where the body attacks itself. So this one here is the big one. So this, when I say it's the big one, I mean <coughs> when you're doing the naming sheets on the second page, there are some examples of some cis-trans in there. Um, so basically what I would ask you to be able to do is recognize the difference between cis and trans, know it's around double bonds, not single or triple, but around double bonds, and note um, that you have to put cis or trans out front when you do it. Every time you have a double bond that doesn't apply, on a test I'll let you know if you're doing cis or trans structures. So I won't have a question where I'm not saying, make sure you label this as cis or trans. Um, the last type of isomer I'm going to talk about very quickly is an optical isomer. So an optical isomer is going to be around carbon, and it's a mirror structure. So I'm just drawing a cartoon to show you what I mean by a mirror structure. This symbol here is a bond coming out from the page. So this is just some three-dimensional drawings, and this is going back into the page. Now, if you're like me, when you look at these two structures here, you think they look exactly the same, but they're not the same. They are mirror structures of each other. So if you had a mirror in between here, this would be like looking in the mirror. Um, if you built these models and you spun them around, you would see they're not exactly the same. So optical isomers are really important in pharmaceuticals because if you don't get your pharmaceuticals correct, you got a problem. So there was a drug that used to be used for um, pregnancy uh, and it was called thalidomide. And basically this drug was awesome because it stopped morning sickness. It worked really well. And morning sickness, don't underestimate it. Lots of people get hospitalized with dehydration. And it's not good for the developing child either. But what happened was the drug company was making the wrong form of the thalidomide. They were making its mirror image. So babies were born with major deformities. So the legs and arms weren't developing properly there. Um, they were able to fix the problem. But after that point, nobody wanted to take this drug thalidomide because of the damage they thought it might do to the developing fetus. So this is just an example of where isomers are important. Folks, recap. Make sure you understand formulas and what it tells you about single, double, triple bonds. <coughs> um, <clears throat> This will be the most important one by far for what we're doing. You won't have to name optical isomers. You won't have to name structural isomers. You're going to have to be able to name and draw cis and trans isomers.